and gentlemen, here she is, the hilarious Kathy Griffin. a week, haven't you? Oh, yeah. I know she was here. I know she was just here two days ago. Let's talk some shit about Britney Spears. about my love for Britney. I'll take any Britney, crazy Britney, sane Britney. Um, and I saw the current tour, Circus. I thought it was great. Now, um, the great thing about the current Britney tour, if you saw it, is it has a lot of fantastic dancing and she doesn't, like, she doesn't get bogged down in any um, singing. <laughs> It's not even an option, did you notice? It's not even on the table. Um, it's lip sync-tastic, and it's a dance extravaganza. We'll, we'll give her that. Although, I just think it's funny that she doesn't even try to fool us. You know, a lot of artists, when they lip sync, they'll record a separate live track, Beyonce, and then... <laughs> And we're gonna get to Taylor and Kanye in a minute. All right, so, so Britney doesn't even try to fool us. And so um, she lip syncs the songs, God Love Her, but she actually sings them, did you notice, in the order that they're in on the CD? Come on, she basically just walks on stage, hits play, and then starts the show. I love her. Anyway, I always will. Um, by the way, you know what I'm, when I'm doing these specials, my nightmare is how, like, after we talk a lot of sh tonight, then I have to deal with the Bravo, like, standards and practices, and it's always a nightmare because it's me just trying to convince them of sh that isn't true. Um, but let's just have fun, shall we? All right, so... So anyway, um, let's... All right, here is my perspective on the Taylor Swift, Kanye West incident, which has become a global incident that even the president has weighed in on, which is so genius that the president called Kanye West a jackass. That's kind of funny. Tonight is going to be a multimedia event. So I actually brought a picture of myself with Taylor Swift because you should know that I know her. So she's a gorgeous girl and blonde and cover of magazines and stuff. All right, let me just say this. I think that that Kanye West thing was the greatest thing that could ever happen to her. She owes him such a muffin basket. Are you kidding? I would kill to have someone do that to me. I would give 50 Cent a million dollars to do that to me. <laughs> that is the kind of good publicity you cannot buy. I mean, this girl, cry me a river. She's got a free pass the rest of her life. Oh, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. Let's break it down. First of all, this girl is wildly successful. She's 12 or 19, or I'm not sure. It doesn't <laughs> all blends together. But she goes, and she's got a beautiful dress on. And by the way, they're talking about how he ruined her moment. I'm sorry, she was getting a VMA. Not the Pulitzer Prize, not the Nobel Peace Prize. Everybody relax. She was getting a video music award. And then good old drunken Kanye West, who we've seen on the red carpet with the upside down bottle of Hennessy, like my mother. You're very 
Maggie Griffin, who you have made a superstar, of course. And by the way, you should know that there's a secret side of Maggie. That there's more to that moo moo than you know. <laughs> well, as you know, she loves her box of wine and also is not technically a paid spokesperson for Franzia, <laughs> but should be. She really has been their goodwill ambassador when you think about it. No one has promoted Franzia or tipping a box of wine more than my mother. Tip it! So. Yes, she's part of the vernacular. So my mother also likes Hennessy. I know, my mother drinks like she's a rapper. It's crazy. <laughs> One Christmas, you know, she calls me up and I said, you know, my mom's hard to buy for because she just wants cash. I know, she's like a hooker. I just want cash for Christ's sake. <laughs> well, what if I decide, God damn it. I just want some goddamn cash because I might want to buy something. It's none of your goddamn business. That's what it is. I'm sick of your shit. Um, oh yeah, that's her big thing is she thinks that shit is not a swear word. So I know. So um, it's really weird. Every Christmas I just give her an envelope of cash, like a drug deal. It's very odd, um, but it makes her happy. And so one year I said, come on, mom, I want to get you something tangible. And then she, you know what I like? I like that Hennessy. I swear to God, I said, uh, is P. Diddy in the next room? What, what are you talking about? So my, one year for Christmas, I got my mom Hennessy and Crown Royal. I was like, stop it, don't you clap for her. She's a role model, shame on you. Do not clap for my mother drinking Crown Royal. And Hennessy. All right, back to some serious sh talking. All right, look. Okay, the John Gosselin thing is a mystery to me. Now, I know that people think Kate is a nightmare. I get it, people don't like her. They especially don't like her angry lesbian haircut. They don't like it. <laughs> they don't like the half chopped off. And have you noticed how it seems like as she gets more unhappy, it gets shorter in the back? <laughs> so she's gonna just be bald back there. But I don't blame her, by the way. I honestly think it's a weird haircut, I get it, but I think she fell asleep and one of those kids got the scissors. I do. I think it was that little Aiden, I really do. I think he might be one of ours, I think. I think he might end up on Team Griffin in 10 years. We're on a pride float, the P flag float. I can see it all. So I get that people don't like Kate, etc. but I'm sorry. John is a lazy, shiftless, useless tool. He's the worst. He's the worst. He is the worst. Banging every substitute teacher, waitress, bar back in Reading, Pennsylvania. Are you kidding me? Now, you know, I'm such a reality fan. I've been watching that show since it started when it was actually a sweet, innocent show about eight kids and they were being raised by the, um, a nice Christian couple. <laughs> Remember that? Remember how season one and two, they were very Jesus-y. Remember they'd go to like the pancake bake off at the church and the church lemonade sale. Now that he's um, banging everything in a skirt, not so Jesus-y, not so into the Jesus. Haven't heard about them going to mass lately. Heard about them uh, going to Starbucks and her Chanel knockoffs getting photographed and banging the bodyguard. But yeah, I can prove it. Nope, I absolutely can. It's called a hunch. Put it in. <laughs> so now Whitney sits down with Oprah. And I mean, the commercials alone were giving me chills for the first time ever. Please tell me you saw Whitney Houston on Oprah. Okay, first of all, I want Whitney's comeback just as much as everybody here. I love her, she's a diva, I get it. So I have the double disclaimer. So my first disclaimer is the Oprah disclaimer because I do believe that someday she will kill me. <laughs> Hold on, let me talk to legal. No, I can't prove she's gonna kill me, but I'm pretty sure. Be because I just know things, that's why. Just put it in. All right, so, so you know, I love to make fun of Oprah, and I love Oprah, and I love Whitney, and let me tell you, I am pulling for her. And after seeing her singing, singing, um, <laughs> on Good Morning America, 
where she um, sounded a little bit um, raspy. <laughs> Perhaps due to a cough. I think her voice was raspy because she was probably doing a lot of scales. <laughs> me, 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 me. Sweaty Whitney in Central Park. She knew that park pretty well. Every bush. Um, all right, so she goes on, and how crazy was it when she goes on with, by the way, the first red flag, the crooked wig. Right? That's how you know what level of awareness Whitney is at. Because let me tell you, you know her gay was straightening that wig to the bitter end, making sure the part was in the right place. But you know what? When the pipe is shaking, you know what I mean? It's hard to keep it on when the pipe is all shaky. No, no, a pipe like Sherlock Holmes. Um, yeah, you can totally leave it in. I meant like, you know, like when you sit in your library with your pipe. All right. So she then goes on Good Morning America and starts singing her hits. And my favorite was when she was like half talking them. And then she started singing a brand new song that had never even been on the radio and doing this shit. Come on, y'all. gays with the signs are like, we don't know that song yet. It's not even... <laughs> Go Diva! I mean, we don't know that song. I, I would like to. I don't... All right, so then she um, does her couple of songs, and then she decides to sing I'm Every Woman, which is very exciting, big hit. So she was um, singing I'm Every Woman... And then she actually announced, after singing the song, that um, she lost her voice and she admitted her voice was raspy and actually blamed someone for it. And I got a little nervous when Whitney Houston had the nerve to blame Oprah. Oprah. Now I'm cramping. I'm cramping. Hold on. <laughs> I'm cramping from fear. Now, that takes a lot of crack to blame Oprah for anything. <laughs> When we get to see her on Oprah, I really thought she had sung like 20 songs on Oprah, and it turns out it was this weird sit down, which blew Oprah's mind. And you know, it's hard to blow Oprah's mind. She's seen everything, heard it all. And by the way, I know this is terrible, but I can't tell you how excited I was to see that for the season premiere, it was Big Fat Oprah. Feeling. Look, I like, I prefer big Oprah. I'm sorry, I don't like skinny Oprah. I know Oprah wants to be skinny Oprah, but her head is too gigantic. <laughs> to fit on a skinny body. She has to accept that like Kirstie Alley, she is meant to be... So yeah, so now Whitney sits down with Oprah, and I mean the commercials alone were giving me chills. For the first time ever, I'm sitting with Whitney Houston! It was a good gay day, was it not? It was a good gay day. 
So Whitney sits down and you gotta admit, for whatever Whitney has been through, she looks great. And I'm saying she looks great for a singer. <laughs> the way Courtney Love is a singer. I mean, Whitney's done a lot of singing. <laughs> like Courtney Love has done a lot of, okay, so you get the point. So, first of all, she looks great. She's sitting there in the dress and the Libertan shoes and everything. But you didn't think it was weird that it sort of almost sounded like she was like still in love with Bobby, right? I thought she was gonna be a little tougher on Bobby. And yet she was talking about like the weird times in their marriage. How about when she described how Bobby would get jacked up on Coke and take a spray can and paint evil eyes on her wall. Evil, yes, paints evil eyes on her wall. And according to Whitney, while he was doing that, she would be doing a little coke and reading the Bible. <laughs> Am I making that up? She said she would do coke and read the Bible, which I don't doubt for a minute. <laughs> I think she knows all the Psalms by heart. And I, but I really thought she was gonna, you know, say how like she, Bobby was the most horrible thing, but it was almost like she was sort of split about Bobby. And one minute she'd be talking all Jesus-y, and you know she went to Jesus every time the shit went down. Cause Oprah would be like, did you do cocaine? <laughs> right? And then Whitney would quote the Bible again, but then every so often she'd slip and every so often she'd be like, I'm like, don't, don't get me wrong, girl, we had good times. Ha <laughs> ha, we had good times. Like that, remember? <laughs> Whitney got a little cracky a couple times <laughs> in a way that was tough. And then after a while, I realized the whole two days was basically just Whitney, bye-bye. Whitney, bye-bye. Whitney, bye-bye. So that's kind of what it boiled down to. And Okay, what about when she was describing exactly how she did drugs in graphic detail, like a freaking how-to guide for how to do crack or rock, or I don't even know what it is. So it, for, at one moment she said she was doing rock, which is rock, crack, is that the same thing? I know it's all whack, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but like the first day she said to Oprah, I did rock. And I thought, okay, that's a pretty big, you know, admission. And then the second day she had some facocta story about how she would be rolling a joint and then lace it with powder cocaine. That doesn't even make sense. But then she gets really into detail and she sat forward in her chair. And she's like, oh girl, what you do? You take the joint, you put it in the corner. <laughs> She started that song on the stairs of the trailer like this. <laughs> Shooting the beef. Pew, 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 pew. Ow! Miley, that stinks. First of all, you should know that um, there's a new man in my life. I, yeah. That's right. I'm gonna tell you about my new boyfriend, Levi Johnston. <laughs> So here's what happened. So for some reason, at the age of 48, I get nominated for two Teen Choice Awards. Because that makes a lot of sense. So when I got nominated for the Teen Choice Awards, I actually started to think, well, if I go to the Teen Choice Awards, who cares about seeing me? There's gonna be all these big stars on the red carpet. You know, I won't get any play or I won't get a picture in the magazine. I've gotta get the perfect date. Who's the, maybe one of the most talked about teens of the year? And then I thought of our beloved Levi Johnston. And you know who he is, right? He's Sarah Palin's daughter Bristol's baby daddy. I know how to pick him, girls. Jealous. Um, and by the way, here's a picture of us attending the Teen Choice Awards together, the happy couple. I gotta be honest though, he was actually very, very sweet. And I love the spilling part, all right? So um, I said, you know, this is your first red carpet, this is how it's gonna go. And I remembered seeing him at the GOP convention, and here's this kid out of nowhere who knocked up the daughter at 16 like she's f***ing Jamie Lynn Spears. I mean, you can't write that shit. You cannot write that shit. I love when it's the conservatives that go down. I can't help it. I love, it's just more fun. It's more fun. It's 
more fun. When Bristol showed up at the convention with the baby bump, I just was in heaven. Glenn Beck was crying. It was great. <laughs> and then Levi shows up, you know, dressed like the Menendez brothers. I just, oh, I love the whole thing. I loved it. So, sure enough, we get in the car, and I'm kind of trying to tell him what's going to happen. All these stars are going to be there and stuff. And then he says, well, you know, don't worry, I won't say anything. And I said, why would you say that? And then he told me that when he went to the GOP convention, this is some inside shit that cannot leave this civic theater. Um, okay, so he told me that when he went to the GOP convention, someone from the party said to him, shut your mouth and don't talk for three days. So I said, well, I feel the opposite. <laughs> Whoever told you that, that is not how I feel. I would like you to talk as much and as often as you like and in particular about Sarah Palin. So really, no holds barred. So yeah, he was, he was like spilling the Palin dirt. It was heaven. If you read that article, he said a lot of it in the article. He said, first of all, he's never seen Sarah Palin and Todd Palin share the same room. I know, I know exactly. And, um, and then what about when Levi said in that article that you know she has the special needs kid and that she would say, bring me my retarded baby. All right, so uh, sure enough, we go to the red carpet, and it was hilarious, because all the big teen stars are there. The Gossip Girls, the High School Musical Kids, the vampires, there was a lot of vampires there from Twilight. <laughs> and sure enough, I'm there with my date, Levi Johnston, and it was so funny, because when I was doing like Entertainment Tonight and Access Hollywood and stuff, they would look at me with one question, and then they looked at him, and at first they wouldn't get it, so this one guy's like, so what do you think of Paul Abdul leaving Idol? What the, who's, what, is that Levi Johnston? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> He's my date, because we are in a serious romantic relationship, <laughs> and we're in love. Right, honey? And then Levi said, that's right, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, I have a boyfriend who calls me ma'am. <laughs> Couldn't be prouder. Couldn't be prouder. So we go in. We take our seats at the Teen Choice Awards, and it was star-studded. The Black Eyed Peas were there. Your very own Britney was there. It was wall-to-wall -wall stars. So I'm sitting there with Levi Johnston, and as if that isn't weird enough, I hear them say on the microphone, okay, everybody, take your seats, take your seats. We're back in a few seconds with a performance from Miley Cyrus. Yeah. All right. So I see the set, and it's a recreation of a trailer Or they drove her house out. I, I... Yeah, that's her house. Because I'm a realtor on weekends. That's why. Put it in. All right, so I see the set of a silver bullet white trash trailer. And I'm really, like, I almost think it's a mirage. It's so heavenly. I can't believe it's really happening. And um, Miley performs her latest hit called Party in the USA. And it's about a party. Uh, that takes place in the USA. Um, yeah, so sure enough, they come back from commercial and there's the trailer, and then the set of the trailer splits into like a hymen, just bam! All right, so, I mean, that's what I thought. I don't know if that's first thought. That's not your first thought? Okay. Um, and the number opens with her in, you saw it, the short shorts, Half cooch, full camel toe. Half cooch, full, come on, cut the shit, San Diego. Half cooch, full camel toe. And stripper boots, stripper boots. And when she started that song, on the stairs of the trailer, like this, <laughs> shooting the beef. Pew, 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 pew. Stings. Beep, 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 beep. Miley, that's my eye. So she's starting the song like this. All right, so I almost can't handle it. 
and she's continuing the song and there's a lot of grinding and the stripper boots and the short shorts. She already shot me in the beef like four or five times. <laughs> and then something else comes on stage, which we'll call a set piece. Because when it was happening, I actually thought, maybe I haven't been getting enough sleep. Maybe I need a little propofol, because this cannot be real. They roll out a stripper pole. I stopped being an atheist at that moment. I realized I was wrong. God does exist, and she hooked my ass up. All right. So, one minute I'm watching a little bit of ridiculousness, the next minute I'm watching 16 year old Miley Cyrus on the stripper pole singing Party in the USA. Really? at the Teen Choice Award, the jaws were on the floor. And the best is Levi Johnston, baby daddy, turns to me and says, and she like 16 years old. Miley, little did I know I was going to see her very soon after that. I got to present when they revived Divas Live. All right, now, do you guys remember the old fashioned Divas show? It was on VH1 and they had like Cher and Whitney and you know, all like the true Divas. Okay, so you know, I, I live for these events where I can see these celebrities backstage, right? So I'm presenting with the host, Paula Abdul. <laughs> I do have a picture of Paula, but I'll warn you, it's a little bit blurry, but that's on purpose. Let's take a look, because this is how she sees the world. <laughs> so I figured it's kind of accurate in a way. All right, so they said Paula's hosting, and I said, okay, great. And I really get a kick out of her. I think she's a pistol, and she's um, unpredictable. <laughs> like the way Courtney Love is unpredictable. <laughs> All right, so sure enough, I show up to the theater and it was really exciting and everyone's rehearsing and I get to see, you know, everyone singing and all that stuff. And Paula was not rehearsing with me for some reason because she was busy dancing as fast as she can. Um, she really was dancing as fast as she could. Um, and she's a tiny little pixie of a girl and she actually looks fantastic. So I did need to rehearse with her though. So I got there hours early and they kept saying, she can't, she can't, she's too busy. And I was like, okay, I get it. She finds me annoying, I get it. But at some point I really do have to rehearse with her. So a few minutes before the show went live, which I love that they put her on live, I know. Um, the producer said, okay, Paula can run the bit with you in her room. Are you okay to go to Paula Abdul's dressing room? I said, oh, f yeah, are you kidding? <laughs> Anytime, anywhere, baby. So I go to Paula Abdul's dressing room and it was just a dream come true. So she's sitting there and her gaze are hooking up and taking care of her and making her look beautiful. And she's got like a sparkly little dress on. And I'm, you know, I'm sure I'm her worst nightmare. I'm sitting on the edge of the couch. And I said, you know, do you want to run this bit? And she goes, I'm going to call you fire crotch. I said, all right, I want to call you fire crotch. That's funny, you should. I'm going to call you fire crotch. Got it. Like she kept saying it over and over. <laughs> I kept a great, yes, good, great, <laughs> um, love it. So, um, so we were sort of rehearsing and talking it out and then she kept wanting me to make a joke about Ryan Seacrest. I go, all right, all right, what if I just do like an innocent joke about um, Ryan Seacrest and Simon Cowell uh, barebacking? All right, so, <laughs> no. um, so Paula Abdul laughed so hard at that, she, in front of me, fell out of her chair and rolled like a stuntman. Fell out and rolled like a stuntman. It was just, that's why she's in so much back pain. That's why she needs those pills, because when she laughs, she falls and rolls. I, I'm a pretty thin girl, right? Okay, so I, I 
am now going to tell you the Hollywood diet, all right? It's called cocaine and Red Bull. Cocaine <laughs> and Red Bull. No, you know why I'm thin? Because I'm hungry all the time. All the time. I'm hungry now. I wish I could have pancakes. I wish Paula Dean would come to my house and deep fry some pancakes, put some powdered sugar on them, some syrup. There's my diet secret. Hungry and bitchy. The thinner I get, the bitchier I feel. I'm f***ing hungry all the time. There. Diet, big diet secret. Big diet secret. By the way, when I, when I was back on The View, um... <laughs> the co-host that day was none other than my new BFF, Kate Goslin. Oh yeah. Um, sorry, Paris. I have a new BFF. And they fixed her hair. They were so proud of fixing her hair. Yeah, I know. So she was actually fine. She was easy. Now, when I did go back on the View, um, there was one one person absent from the panel for some reason. Barbara was a no-show. Oh no, Hasselbeck is easy. It's Barbara is the one that I want. Now, I'm gonna be honest, Barbara Walters cannot stand me, but like Brokeback Mountain, I can't quit her. I can't quit her. <laughs> so, I get booked on The View, and then I find out that they're doing two shows that day. They're doing a live show, and then the show I'm on isn't live, for some reason. <laughs> Weird. And, um, one of the producers says that Barbara is not able to stay for my show because she has an appointment. I know, I'm like, yeah, she stars in her own show. That's her appointment. What is she doing? It's like, oh no, no, she can't stay. It's, I said, is it because of me? You can just tell me. No, no, not at all. She has an appointment. All right, but they said that the co-host that day instead would be Latoya Jackson. <laughs> oh, it gets better. It gets better. So sure enough, because they're taping a live show and then there's my show, in order to see or accidentally run into Barbara, I got my ass there like three hours early. Uh, I was there before like the stagehands even opened up the building, you know? So, so sure enough, they've just done the live show with LaToya and LaToya was smart enough to get the f out of Dodge. <laughs> And so I'm walking down the halls at The View, and The View producers are there, and then I start just walking through the halls just going, Barbara, Barbara, I'm here. Barbara, I just want to say hi. I was determined to have my Barbara moment. And, and the producers are saying, Kathy, she left. And I said, no, I really think it's personal. Barbara. And they said, she's gone. And then Tiffany goes, she made it right down the hall. Tiffany's on it. So the producers are like, what, no? And so I make her right down the hall. Barbara, are you there? It's me, Kathy, I'm coming. And they're going, Kathy, she left. And Tiffany goes, second door on the right. <laughs> so sure enough, I go and I bum rush her in the ladies room, <laughs> knocking on the metal door of the stall. Barbara, it's Kathy Griffin, I'm here, I just wanted to say hi. I heal you, I've been healing you the whole time, running down the hall. I know you're here, everybody in the building knows you're here. So, it was kind of great. So, she finally comes out of the stall, and I'm just waiting for it at the sinks, and one of the producers is just trying to make it go away, make it go away. And sometimes it doesn't leave, and, I'm saying, oh, Barbara, I'm so sorry you couldn't stay. You know, wh where are you going? Wouldn't you love to stay and do the show? Of course I can't stay, I have an appointment. I go, what are you talking about? Look, I even wore Oscar de la Renta for you. And then she goes, well, that's where I'm going. I'm going to the Oscar de la Renta fashion show. He's a friend of mine and I only go to one fashion show a year. And I said, Oscar, for you, I'll do it. So I've got to go now to the Oscar de la Renta fashion show. <laughs> like, so. I'm still de 
determined to talk to her. And I said, Barbara, I just want you to know, I really hope you read my book. I hope you like it. I really loved your book, Audition. And you can tell she just wanted to get the fuck out of there. In fact, I have a picture of the two of us where she's very excited to be in a photograph with me. You know what? They can run, but they can't hide. That's the bottom line. <laughs> All right. So then... I get an email from an unnamed friend who works in entertainment journalism who says, a little birdie told me that when you go to The View, LaToya Jackson doesn't want to be there for you either, so she's not going to do the show. Oh, I get like seven of those a day. That's no big deal. I'm used to it. <laughs> and so that's how Kate Gosselin ended up doing it, which is kind of better for me because she's the one on the cover of the magazines, right? Um, and I admit, I, I admit, I wouldn't know exactly what to say to LaToya Jackson. Like, I, I'm sure I would keep staring at her. Because um, I, I wouldn't be able to take my eyes off her. Because I think she's, she's had quite a bit of um, dental work. And you know, I've been to the dentist myself. I've had a teeth cleaning and a root canal and fillings. I've had all kinds of dental work. But I think Latoya went to the orthodontist. All right, so come on. She has a different head than she used to. She got a head transplant. Let's cut the sh um, All right, we have to talk about Michael Jackson for one second. We have to, we have to. So first of all, we didn't know the family was as nuts as we're now finding out. They are, right? I'm talking to you, Jermaine, Tito, Marlon, watching you. Who knew that Michael was the normal one? <laughs> Please tell me you saw the dad, Joe Jackson and Larry King. I know, it was crazy, crazy. First of all, he's sitting there with the pimp hat and the tattooed drag queen eyebrows. <laughs> like maybe this whole time, he just has a separate drag character that he does at night. <laughs> named Latoya. Because it's possible. That's why it should be in. It's, po it's not probable, it's possible. Put it in. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I cannot get over the way he OD'd. It is unprecedented. It puts the other ones to shame. I mean, John Bonham and Anna Nicole and Janis Joplin. I mean, that was child's play. The way he OD'd is something I've never even heard of. So apparently in Hollywood, you can be so wealthy and powerful that you can actually pay a doctor. I don't know what that dude's deal is, but let's go with doctor. To, to come to your house and give you anesthesia to sleep. And by the way, you know that stuff, Dipravan or Propofol or whatever? Does, will anybody else here admit that they wish they had some sometimes? <laughs> I, I know that's terrible. I know that's terrible. But there have been nights when I can't sleep that I've just wanted to say, Tiffany, get the Propofol. Tom, get some milk, some sugar, and a little dipper van. Thanks. <laughs> so the idea that you can be so wealthy and powerful, you can pay someone to bring anesthesia, which, by the way, I have had when I've been to the <laughs> dentist. All right, you know. <laughs> and then you got to have, like, an oxygen tank next to it. I, I can't get over this. I mean, I'm trying to picture it. So Michael Jackson couldn't sleep. Okay, so then this doctor would come in, and they say you put it, like, in an IV in your hand, and then you have to watch the person the whole time. And supposedly when you take it out, they wake right up. And I'm imagining night after night, someone was putting a needle in. Michael Jackson would lay down. Then they'd just watch him. <laughs>
All right, let's... We have to talk about the kids for one second. I'm sorry, but wasn't it fascinating to see those kids in person after years of seeing them with only a feather mask? <laughs> you know how like when you guys were little and you'd go to the mall with your feather masks? <laughs> All right, so, but I have to admit, it was fascinating seeing those kids in person and weren't they more normal than you ever would have predicted? They seem so normal and their names of course are very normal. Um, <laughs> Prince Michael, Paris, and... <laughs> Seriously, Blanket? We can't give Blanket a new name, Ralph? I mean, this kid can't catch a break? He's gonna be called Blanket the rest of his life? Throw pillow, duvet? I mean, we gotta rename this kid's dad. And Prince Michael II is not what I had in mind. All right, so we look at these kids. And by the way, I will tell you right to your face, I am not going to engage in a debate for one second that Michael Jackson could be the biological father of any of those kids. I'm not having it, not tonight. There's no way. Those kids are Whitey, Whitey McGee, and Whitey McWhiterson. <laughs> special category I lost to the Kennedy Center Honors and I hate those f***ers. All right now I do have to tell you something about the Emmys because uh, last time I did a special I had a triumphant story of victory for winning my second Emmy and I was very proud yes. tonight with a little different story because this year I was lucky enough to be nominated for two Emmys and lost both in the stand-up special category I lost to the Kennedy Center Honors and I hate those f***ers um, and then in the reality category I lost to those crackheads at intervention and I'm bitter and screw them with their buckets of meth and they're following people around possibly Whitney Houston, screw them, <laughs> screw them. And so, as a proud member of the Academy, I can tell you that it's an honor just to be nominated. And so this year, the ceremony came and went, and while I didn't have a statue, I still have my certificates, my nominations, no one can take that back. And I um, would like to say that I took it really, really well. But in fact, when I got back home, Tiffany taped my real reaction. 